This is my dream, this is my passion, this is something that I believe in. If you're always afraid that things are gonna go wrong, your business is not gonna succeed. Who would have thought Sats would make us millionaires? I'm a third skill entrepreneur, a CEO of Spurgo. I'm the inventor of the locker boards. I'm 14 years old. I'm the CEO of Sally Candy. And I'm the co-founder here at Rumble Boxing. The CEO of Play Versus. This is my hustle. 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 <laughs> Today on My Hustle, we're going to see some extraordinary entrepreneurs who have turned their passions into profit. Follow along as we learn about their business, determination, and road to success in the sport and entertainment industry. We're kicking off today's episode in Naples, Florida, where Chuck Malone's passion for basketball didn't lead him to the NBA in the way he expected. I am the only person in the world that gets paid to teach NBA players dunks. <laughs> Dunk mentor? I mean, yes. Who? His name is Chuck. Daryl High grad Chuck Malone, the Naples resident, is considered the dunk whisperer. He's helped numerous players like Paul George and John Wall prepare for dunk contests. I'm Chuck Malone, CEO and founder of Team Flight Brothers, also the official dunk coach of the NBA, and this is my hustle. I never wanted to be there when school was happening, but I always wanted to be there when no one was there so we could practice dunks. Like, we literally used to break into my high school. We would go there, me and a couple friends, and we would set up cameras and just see what we looked like dunking. Chuck used to carry a camera with him everywhere. Well, I remember when I first moved down here, uh, I heard about him, but I never really met him. You know, I'm thinking, oh, you, you look at Chuck and you underestimate him. But he got the ball and he just took off and I was like, Okay, uh, he got some bounce. But he has a knack for this. He has his, like his grandfather said, who would ever think a white boy could jump? Like when we started getting good, it was like, man, like this is, uh, this is actually pretty dope. We started making our own like little highlights. It was around 2000, uh, and somebody had posted a picture of me on a website, uh, and then all of a sudden, a company in France got a hold of me. Uh, and they, you know, told me that they wanted to pay me to come do dunk shows in, like, in Taiwan. When he came back from that trip, he said, you know that, I really enjoy that, but I don't think they run, they, they run the system well. I don't think they know exactly what they're doing. They, you know, we were kind of treated like, uh, like a circus kind of thing. I mean, initially, my first thought was like, I'm gonna go home and make a team and take this team out. Well, like the name Flight Brothers comes from uh, from myself and my best friend Micah. We would just like dunk like crazy and people would see us around and be like, oh, there goes the Flight Brothers. And then once I started putting players together, I would find them, fly them in, uh, and check them out. And if they were good, we'd try to make something happen. We'd film stuff, start uploading videos on like different streaming sites. This is still before, you know, probably three years before YouTube's existing. Once I put the players together, it was like, okay, Team Flight Brothers. And that's how, TFB was born. We didn't know how finances were gonna be made. Uh, I was working two, three jobs to, you know, to facilitate like flying guys in. Then YouTube came along and kind of changed all that. Fortunately, I ran into an athlete that was just like a freak of nature, who's T-Dub. He's like our 5'9 superstar for so many years. Uh, and we put a video up of him, filmed it at two o'clock in the morning, just a bunch of dunks, put it up, Four o'clock in the morning, went to sleep, woke up 11 a.m. the next day, and it had a million views on it. We were on the front page of YouTube. Immediately, we had an email from YouTube, and we get on the phone, he talked to me about their partner program, uh, and how we can get paid for like ads popping up on our videos. It's like, all right, let's try it out. And then, you know, four months later, first check came from YouTube, and I was like, I think I'm gonna quit my job soon. <laughs> when we come back, We'll see how Chuck made the jump from YouTube to the NBA. Chuck's videos certainly got the attention of basketball fans, but how did that lead him to be the NBA's dunk whisperer? In that era, the early YouTube era, a lot of the kids that were watching, the high schoolers that were huge Team Flight Brothers fans, they end up do, do, being really good. Top players in the country. Ends up like, okay, who's this John Wall kid? Like that's hitting me up asking me about dunk tips. All of a sudden he's the number one player in the country. Then he's in the NBA. Same thing, Terrence Ross, he was at Washington, huge Team Flight Brothers fans. They're in the, then all of a sudden they have an opportunity to be in the dunk contest. They know they can hit me up and be like, hey, 
Uh, I don't have time to think of dunks, like can you do it for me? And then people started being like, okay, well, we gotta go talk to this Chuck guy and see what, you know, why he knows something that we don't. 2015 came around, Victor Oladipo hit me up, and he's like, yeah, man, what can I do, like, against this guy? He spins really well, so I suggested he do, do a 540 because nobody's ever done one in an NBA dunk contest. Never been done. No, that's, that's Mr. 540. That's Mr. 540. And he's still, you know, five years later, the only guy to ever do a 540 in a dunk contest. Glenn Robinson in 2017 was the underdog by a lot. Uh, and honestly, the first time I went and worked with him, I was like, we got a lot of work to do. He had never like jumped over anyone, never really, never been in a dunk contest. Put the guy on the guy's shoulders <laughs> instead of just like being lined up. So they were like stacked on top of each other. He's like, are you serious? Did it the first try and then See, I worked with Donovan Mitchell, who won in 2018, uh, this past year with Hami Diallo. After practice, he was like, so what am I gonna do? Like, wait, he's like, I'll do those dunks? I'm like, yeah, you're not doing that. It's like, you're, you're gonna jump over Shaq. And he's like, huh? He's like, what do you mean I'm gonna jump over Shaq? I was like, yeah, you're gonna jump over Shaq. Man. A lot of people say that's like a top 10 dunk, you know, dunk contest ever. The years prior, my guys were just like, <laughs> putting on great performances and winning every year. The guy that worked for the NBA, you know, who's like a really good guy, he <laughs> hit me up. And he's just like, hey, like, you're doing really good things with all these guys that we didn't think were going to do good. Like, we need you on our team. Uh, and obviously, like, that's, that's what I was waiting for the whole time. This has never been a position. They literally made a dunk coach position just for me. It's never, never happened before. Oh, you're thinking about it too much now. <laughs> Trying to put it in a perfect spot. Or either that or the slingshot. I'll do both. I'll do both. <laughs> Just had uh, Will Button come through for a little dunk session to kind of kind of shake, uh, shake off the rust. We have a couple tours coming up. So just going through some dunks and making sure his elevation's all right. I've been with Team Flight Brother since 2010. Chuck improved me as a dunker a lot. Um, normally, I'm not as creative, but he brought the creative side out of me. Right now, we're actually on the way to my old high school, Astero. Uh, we're going to work out a little bit. Uh, the past probably like eight months, I've been on like a crazy, crazy gym kick. I was unfortunately fell into uh, the travel life. I was about 265 pounds. I've lost uh, about 65 to 70 pounds. It's like somewhere in the middle. I mean, it was tough because when I first started working with NBA guys, I could still dunk. So they'd look at me and be like, hey, like, you, you're the dunk guy, like you can dunk. And so I would be able to go ahead and dunk. And then the past couple of years, I haven't been able to. Uh, so that was like tough. And then also like for other opportunities and stuff. I've been on like some TV shows and there's been opportunities that came that w my way. And I mean, let's let's face it, like unfortunately, like if you're massively overweight, you're not really that camera friendly. I mean, I'm pretty happy where I am, um, but I just want to maintain and like just be healthier like all the time. <laughs> like I just, I don't ever want to be you know, gain weight again. Uh, so, I mean, the passion is there, he recognized it. I had no idea he was going to make a living out of this. But um, I think he's here to stay. At first, I was very against it because obviously you want your kids to go off to college and get a huge college degree and go and be a professional doing something. Well, he is a professional. He made a new profession basically is what it is. I have one goal that I've had like since I've like seen this become a reality and it's to, to have dunking in the Olympics. And that's that's my like last goal with everything. My hustle is just like the grind. It's like relentlessness. Uh, just never like allowing somebody to tell you you can't do something. Uh, it's tell me I can't do it. I'm gonna do it five times and I'm gonna do it better every freaking time. That's my hustle. Safe to say that Chuck's career move was a slam dunk. When we come back, we'll see how Spice Adams made the transition from pro athlete to social media star. Most pro athletes struggle with what to do with themselves after they retire. Not Spice Adams. 
Anthony Spice Adams, always the animated teammate. What? What, what, what to say now, Jack? And that oversized personality has made him a star after football. You guys might call him Dwayne Johnson. I'll call him DJ, you know, because we tight like that. Not many private. people did it better than Anthony Adams. I got a million views instantly. I'm just like, this is this is dumbest video in the world. Some random person like tweeted it and it just took on a life of his own. <laughs> I just, I like to have fun. I'm just as passionate about making videos as I am with football. I don't know what's next. But that's the beauty of it. Whew, gotta love it. What's up everybody? Anthony Spice Adams here, former professional football player turned entertainer. Now, this is my hustle. How would I describe my profession? Once I got done with football, I literally had no plan, but I like to entertain. Kind of started as a dare with uh, one of my teammates. They were like heavy on social media, Twitter, and I really wasn't. They saw like, you know, my personality in a locker room and they said, man, you, you're built for social media, like the stuff that you do. I couldn't see it. Like I just, uh, I just wanted to focus on football and that was it. So they said, man, just start a Twitter account. Man. And like, I was like, I already got one, but I don't use it or whatever. They're like, we'll use it. So I put out a retirement video and it just, it went crazy. Hello. Ooh, this is about to be big. I mean, it was everywhere. ESPN assignment desk was like, hey, can we use your video? I was like, yeah, okay, go ahead. I go to check on my Yahoo account, because yes, I still have Yahoo. Don't judge me. And it's on the front page. And they called me the greatest NFL free agent ever, which I am. Ever since then, you know, I've been putting content together, but it all started from, you know, Chris Harris and Earl Bennett. Hold on, I'm gonna just follow you right now. What is it? Oh. Boom! <laughs> Thank you so much, I'm gonna I'm follow no you back. Yep, yep, yep. My dad went to prison when I was four because I was the only child. I had to find ways to, to do things so that people would want to come over and visit me. Just to try to make people laugh, just try to get a rise out of somebody. Just to say hi to a person, you know what I mean? But I say all that to say that I value being a dad the most over anything. Like, I just, I really value being a dad. Winter, Chick-fil-A, and ordered fries. <laughs> Yeah. My favorite video that I shot was the Chick-fil-A fries video like that. And it, it's crazy that it has the most views on my YouTube account. My wife and I, we were in the parking lot and she was like, come on, Anthony, like, we're gonna get arrested. Like, the, the cops are gonna come or whatever. <laughs> Every time I walk in the house with an outfit on or with the wig going or with some funky deal that I got going, my wife is just like, and the kids are just like, hey, dad, hey, shh. Dad's gonna shoot a video in a minute. Shh. Hey look, you, you guys that's trying to duplicate me. I'm the flame, you the mark. My creative process is I kind of think with the end in mind, like how I want to end the video. And uh, sometimes I just, I get things just like right away or something happens to me and I'm just like, that's a video. So the characters are basically like what I would see in a family reunion. You always see the uncles, exotic gators on their feet with like tube socks, the Bluetooth flip phones. It's just like they're stuck in time warps. <laughs> When you see another old head that recognized me from the old head videos, like I'll just be walking somewhere and they say, you, you, you the dude, right? The, the one you did when you were at the movie theater? Oh man, me and my wife must laugh for a month of Sundays. It's always the ones that you think are stupid, that you think are silly. Those are the ones that just go crazy. And just like the Cream Biggums video, like it's like I'm in a garage, I'm ashy, and at some point I'm sweating. I'm doing all of these different moves with these Chuck Taylors on, high-waisted shorts, and I'm just like, this is this is dumbest video in the world. The NBA Finals are on. I'm gonna put this stupid video out. I'm just gonna do it. Like the finals are going on, and then my phone was just going crazy. I was getting text messages and everything. Everybody's like, you know, Kevin Hart just posted your video. Jamie Foxx posted, Snoop Dogg, and House of Highlights, and like all of these different people with millions of followers, and it just went crazy. You know, the first couple of years was an absolute grind, um, especially as you were building up the social media. Starting out where we started, which was literally the basement. He, he's done some incredible things. One of the breakthroughs was the Great American Baking Show on ABC. That was kind of a first 
real step into national television. Watch the show. I got four kids, man. <laughs> We look at it like we're, we're just getting started. You know, as far as the goals that we have and where we want to get to, I, I, we're still on the first or second floor. Just the journey that I've been on and now playing in the celebrity all-star game. Like that's, that's wild. Like I couldn't even dream of something like that. Like I, I would have never thought of it. Our team has a bunch of guys with chips on their shoulders. Yeah, we got chips on our shoulders. I feel like a lot of, the, a lot of guys on my team were underdogs. And uh, I feel like we got some food. What's up, everybody? It's your main man, Spice Adams. I'm a little tired. I played in the game last night, had a lot of fun, but I am here in Chicago for the whistle pop up shop. Let's go. Let's have a good time. What's up, man? You're plenty of late night laughs, right? I appreciate that, man. <laughs> On you. You gotta say, ready, set, go, or something? Ready, set, go. Uh, Spice, Cream Biggums, Famous Loves. <laughs> but I met Spice in Chicago. Spice pulled up on me in the new Tesla. The new, the new Tesla. I, no, I had a minivan. No, he capping. Funniest dude on uh, Instagram. There's nothing Spice can't do. Like, no cap. I love it. All-Star Week is arguably our busiest week of the entire year. We have brand partnerships, media on top of that, family responsibilities, those sorts of things. Uh, I'm about to be in trouble. The kids, man, driving my wife crazy right now, man. It's a busy week. It's, it's, it's one of the busiest, if not the busiest of the year. The first time I saw Spice, it was on Instagram. It was, it was funny as hell, and I loved it, and I follow him. His knees might be too swollen after that game yesterday, so I don't know. He's, he's old now, but yeah, just a legend. Just a legend and a GOAT. That's it, yeah. I'm going to just say, What keeps me motivated is the fact that I found something else that I'm passionate about. I was going to be playing football forever. To find something else that you're just as passionate about is great. Uh, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> um, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, so I grew up around a, a, a lot of gang violence, and I can relate to a lot of you guys. But what I had to realize is football was just something that I did. It's not who I am. Who I am is really an entertainer. That's Green spicy. Bigham's gonna be playing in the That's Celebrity All-Star Game Friday. I'll probably get a triple-double. If you can just reach one, that person can impact the world. You never know how that can impact somebody else and then them impact the world. Y'all give it up for Spice Adams. Y'all give it up, give it up. I'm from Detroit, so that's all we know is hustle. I love the hustle. I love the grind. The next day, be better than you were yesterday. You see right now, man, I, you're looking at a guy who's lost 80 pounds. I don't know if you can see it or not, but. My stress. <laughs> I don't know what's next. That is the beauty. I do not know, but I'm excited for it. Like, I got my health. I got my kids. That right there. That's all I really care about, man. So like, what's next? I'm excited for it, and I don't know what it is, but I know I'm gonna have fun, whatever it is. We're excited to see what you come out with next, too. Stay tuned to see how Buster Share turned his NBA fandom into his dream job. As a teen, Buster Share simply liked to vlog about the NBA from his parents' basement. He never imagined that would lead to a broadcast career. Yo, what's going on here for another 60 second show with hey. Andre Drummond over here. Danny Green, Kemba Walker. Shout out to my boy Buster. I'll see you soon. What's going on? This is Buster Cher, 18 years old, founder of Hoops Nation, and this is my hustle. Interview, take one. So Hoops Nation is really what my ideal version of a basketball outlet was. I thought it would be cool to have a basketball outlet by a kid for other kids, highlighting on some of the memes that people my age are into, as well as some of the highlights that people my age are into with no outside input, really.
So when I was 14 years old, I started blogging about fantasy basketball. When I was 15 years old, I really started learning how to video edit and photo edit. When I was 16, I started broadcasting for the first time, both on radio and then local TV. At 17, a lot of the stuff started going viral on Facebook, and then I eventually jumped over to Instagram around the same time, as well as Snapchat and other platforms. And at 18, I started working with some of my favorite companies, including the NBA. One lasagna on top of another. Is that one big lasagna or just two stacked lasagnas? I thought lasagna was like the whole thing when it's done. So I think as far as the breakdown of money that's coming in, as far as where it's coming from and what it's coming from, this month, the majority percentage is from show hosting. Uh, so I'd say 65, 65 to 70% is from show hosting. 20% uh, is from a couple different ad deals through Instagram and through social media, as well as a couple more uh, organic brand opportunities with some of the, some of the cooler brands that I align with. Um, as far as just putting out content on a general basis. This is a 90.3 FM WWPT, the greatest high school radio station in the world. And you know, we would literally sit down, do shows sometimes multiple times a day. This station won best in the country and then I won best sports cast my junior year of high school, which was the last year I did broadcasting you know, consistently every day. And this is really where all the broadcasting started. It's really fun to be back and uh, this is the studio, this is 90.3 WWPT, the one and only. The legend. Ah, oh, Buster. What's going What's on? What's going on, my friend? How are you? Good to see you. It's been too long. Good to see you. It's awesome. been far too long. There the studio. Is. The studio. We're back. WWPT, TV. Station is good. Station is good, man. Have a seat. It's so funny. So the last like real play-by-play -play broadcast I did was when I was in high school, and then right. since then it's been more show hosting, and yeah. event hosting, and yeah. documenting and doing my own videos. Yeah. But Monday I'm actually doing my first NBA game. Come on, now. broadcasting. Awesome. Did you do your prep? We have done prep. Okay, awesome. Um, prep. It's all about the prep. I think one of the big things too is that I feel like I just haven't like we have, like, it hasn't started yet. Yeah, you just begin. Just getting started, man. Yeah, just getting started, man. Awesome. Thanks, bro. Always. Thank you. So this is my mom's studio. This is kind of really where all the broadcasting actually started, where I started getting a couple reps in on social media. So I would literally sit at this desk back when Facebook Live first launched and just live stream talking about the NBA and basketball. <laughs> there were definitely some very late night live streams where uh, I would get a little bit tired towards the end of it after the Western Conference games would end at 1, 2 a.m. And I'd, I'd get a couple posts out, do a couple edits, and it'd be like 3, 4 a.m. And I have school at 7 a.m. So I had to make a decision between doing homework, going to bed, continuing doing what I'm doing, or just passing out right then and there while I'm doing what I'm doing. But more often than not, I chose both not to get sleep and not do the homework. So I would just be here live streaming. He was diagnosed with dyslexia and ADHD when he was six. Um, so that was always a huge struggle, always, you know, trying to find the right accommodations for him. Essentially, schools don't teach kids like that the way they need to be taught to make them really interested in learning. So he found another route. There were a lot of class days where I just had no idea what was going on. And literally every other person in the class knew exactly what was happening. And I know there are definitely a lot of kids like the way that I was, but it was just the worst feeling for anybody that, that definitely is struggling similarly to how I was. Uh, you know, you gotta just put in as much effort as you can, but keep in perspective that that is a very, very small percentage of what actually matters. And, you know, in six months, you won't remember it. Advice for young entrepreneurs, stay consistent as long as possible. And even when you think it's not gonna work or you spent too much time in your eyes on something, spend five times as much time on it. And you will win every time. From being a social media star to creating your own role as the NBA dunk coach, sometimes you have to invent your own career. With a crazy idea, dedication, and drive, you can do anything. These three entrepreneurs have shown us what their hustle is. What's yours?